Hello, I'm Mark. Welcome to another Scotch Review. And today we have Dewar's Elite Illegal Smooth. So we'll talk a little about this. Let me pour it first. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give me, tell me what you think of this or the, even the idea of this because we have a train coming, but also um, we have something that's actually finished in mezcal casks. So, anyway, so um, Dewar's is a brand of, of, they make blend, mostly they make blends, and they're owned by Bacardi. And they claim that their white label is the most popular selling scotch. Uh, however, this is one of their, they have, a, I think this is a series of three so far. There's a Caribbean smooth and a Portuguese smooth. Portuguese is the port, Caribbean is the rum, and the Ilegal is mezcal casks. So what we know about mezcal is it is similar to tequila, only it is smoked, and tequila is strictly from agave. Um, and I don't know that mezcal is. I don't know that all mezcal is smoked, because I think I've had some mezcal that isn't smoked. Um, so anyway um yes so this is actually eight years old and it is 40 but it's only 40 percent abv it's double aged and then finished in the mezcal um so anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and roll this first i think i may have poured too much nope i'm good so doers again is um We'll wait for the train. So, the Dewar's Whiskey brand was created by John Dewar Sr. in 1846, and under the control of him and his sons, um, they became, they expanded and became like this big global market, and they are probably one of the best, they're probably the best selling scotch that in the U.S. Um, I've gone to several conferences, and when they have an open bar, it's generally Dewar's White Label that's available. Um, so, yeah, I know that a lot of Dewar's is out there. Uh, actually, um, the man who introduced me to Scotch, a judge that I used to work for, uh, God rest his soul, um, he, Dewar's was his favorite brand. Uh, and he, but anyway, he traveled to Scotland frequently, but still, Dewar's was his favorite brand. And um, yeah, yeah, I think Dewar's. And he, um, oh well, anyway, so um, anyway, the, this, in uh, 1896, they started the Aberfeldy Distillery, which is probably where they get most of, well, it is where they get most of their distillate from, but they own like four other distilleries, including Altmore, Craig, which I think is peated, um, Craig Lodge and McDuff, which I don't know what McDuff makes, and Royal Brackla, which I've never had. So um, they, destroyed, they joined the distiller's company in 1925, which was then, they were then acquired, the whole, Distiller Group was then acquired by Guinness in 1986. Guinness merged, then merged with uh, Grand Metropolitan, which formed Diageo in 1997. And a year later, they sold the Dewar's brand off to Bacardi. So that's how Bacardi's owned it since then. So, okay. Yeah, and so here is some Mezcal. Um, usually Mezcal is known for having the worm in the bottle of, bottom of it. Um, and mezcal tends to be smoky, but I don't know that all mezcal is smoky. So, okay. So let me show it to you in there and in the bottle. Yeah, I'm going to move this mezcal because it is definitely smells weird. It's been sitting in my freezer too long. Roll this again. Okay, and so yeah, with mezcal casks, this came out in 2020, 2019, 2020, I think. Um, this must have been sitting ready to be bottled because it wasn't until 2019, maybe 2020, when they even allowed tequila and mezcal to for that to be finishing barrels for scotch. Um, so that is very new. So this is probably, well, it's the only one that I know of. Um, you, you will see some more scotches finished in tequila and mezcal in the, in the future. This is probably the first. 
Uh, but it's because, again, it was only since 2019, 2020, maybe two years ago, probably, God, yeah, probably about two years ago when that became legal according to the the, the powers that be. I remember reading about it in a, in a that um, it started then. So, yeah, you're not going to find too much in those casks at this point. But... Um, so you have to figure if it didn't, wasn't legal till then, and this came out in 2020, probably wasn't legal until 2019. It probably didn't sit in those casks very long, which is probably a good thing because that would really overpower, I think. But we'll see. I'm going to be very curious as to what we have here. No, definitely not a huge influence on that. I mean, vanilla, coconut. Candy sugar, like sweet, like fake sugar, kind of. <sighs> Coconut. Definitely that tropical fruit note. Now, mezcal tends to be smoky, um, and I'm getting a little bit of that, not a whole bunch. Because you have to figure the grains actually weren't smoked. It's what went into the barrel that they finished it in. So you're not going to get a whole lot of smoke. It's there, but it's very... You have to hunt for it. I want to roll this again. A uh, little disturbing. Some apples. Maybe it's not the bottle that <laughs> next. Maybe it's just the, the mezcal. Okay, so vanilla, coconut, maybe toasted oak. Light, 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 light smoke. All right. Mm. More fruit. Apples. Pears. do definitely get some of the influence of the agave. Um, but there's definitely a creaminess to this. And a bitter finish. Yep. That's... It isn't anything else. Typical doers. It's not complex. Gosh, it just feels, smells strange. There's just this. Must be the mezcal. A little bit of that cream comes through, but like I said, coconut probably, coconut and vanilla. But. Not necessarily in a good way. I'm getting a little bit of a little bit of nuts in there. Almonds. There's some almonds in there. The mezcal has an influence. There's no question about it. It's that you can smell the agave. The agave spice is in there. I guess that's what it is. I'm not a tequila drinker. The only time I drink tequila is when you add Tabasco. So, I, I, you know, I, of course, I don't even drink Patron. I'm going to drink Don Julio if I'm going to drink. Or this isn't bad, but. I don't drink Patron or Jose Cuervo. 
I do get some oak. Toast, again, it's maybe that toast, it's like a toasted oak. Okay, yeah, definitely better on the palate than the nose. Creamy vanilla, pear is an apple. The agave spice and the smoke are like way in the back. There is an earthy tone to this, but okay, so time to grade it. You don't need to keep this on your shelf. It's nothing spectacular. We'll go with the five. We'll see you next time.